food is about everything. To me, it's, it's my life. As a child, everybody came up in the kitchen, really, particularly in the African-American community. Your mom was in the kitchen, you in the kitchen. But I didn't pay that any attention when I was coming up. I didn't like the kitchen. I didn't stay there. I did what they call housework. You know, you go in, you make the beds, you dust, you mop, you scrub the floor, do that kind of thing. And my sister was always the one in the pots. I never liked the pots. That's what shocked my whole family and everything. They couldn't believe I had come to the kitchen. <laughs> but when I went to work in the French quarters and I worked as a waitress, I love to wait tables. I just think it's just great to wait tables to serve people. Then you get to go in the kitchen, you see what's happening in the kitchen. And I just thought that was just a wonderful thing. It made me want that, want a restaurant of my own, want to cook for myself but then I didn't have anybody. And I was fortunate enough or lucky enough to marry a man whose mother had, you know, back then you didn't have restaurants like you have today. And in the black community, you had nothing but little sandwich shops because everybody cooked at home. Nobody ate out. Well, there, it was segregation. There was nowhere for you to eat. When I started out years ago, would you believe in this city, we only had about three or four black doctors. So you see, blacks were not in profession. They cooked, they sewed, and the men were carpenters or bricklayers or iron workers, that kind of thing, you know. Nobody was in the, in the restaurant business but my mother-in-law who started making sandwiches so that I had to start there. That was fun. So when I got in that restaurant, I said, here's my chance. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Think, you know, you're young and stupid. You think, oh, and this is what I thought. No difference in people with the color of their skin. Why we can't cook this uh, shrimp Newberg in this restaurant? And I didn't realize that, no, it's different cultures. You have different tastes. It's more than different colors of your skin. That I had to go back to what I knew. I had to go back to like oyster dressing and stuffing that chicken breast with oyster dressing and making the shrimp creole, what we call that shrimp stew. And in New Orleans, it was a whole different thing for me because I didn't have the fresh vegetables that I came up with. My daddy grew the greens, we grew the okra we do things. But you had other things. Belly tall people's vines. Everybody's backyard in the seventh ward had a belly tall vine. And they had another thing, the gourd, like, and we called it a Chinese okra. And you could take that gourd and slice it and fry it. So you learn different things and how to prepare different foods. And now, whew, you can run the game. Now it's fun. Now it's really fun because you get a mixture of everything. I came up eating a lot of pork, a lot of pork. What we raised those pigs for was for the Lord. You know, if you've got a hog up to 300 pounds, then you had, you could get 100 pounds of Lord off of that 300 pounds. Here I come, I learned about coffee. <laughs> to coffee something is to prepare it in its own juices and preserve. Well, we've been coffee in this pork and it's <laughs> all this time. We coffee in the pork, we put it in the lawn, that's how we keep it. We didn't have a freezer. And when you wanted that pork chop, you went in that lawn and got the pork chop out. <laughs> Coming up as a child well, was depression. I was born in, what, 1923? Depression hit 1929, so it was hard times. People had nothing, but my daddy used to grow things he would form. And his big thing, I don't know why daddy liked to grow onions so much. Onions, we had onions all over the place. We could give the whole little town onions. That's how many onions we had. And we were so poor sometimes in the evening, all we had for our dinner really was 
a pot of grits and what we call smothered onions, just grits and onions. We ate that, we were never hungry, we didn't have fancy food. Then I grew up and now the smothered onions, my dear, are caramelized onions today. <laughs> Got all fancy on <laughs> I said, I've been eating this when I was poor. What is this caramelized onions? <laughs> so you go, <laughs> then we grew strawberries. That was our big thing in Madisonville was to grow strawberries. We had, what, 20 acres, 50, 20 acres. Now you gotta get up in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, dew all over the place, cold. You gotta get up there and pick those strawberries. Uh, that is not a fun job to look at 20 acres and know you gotta get it all up out of there before the sun gets too hot. So, and then you hear the quails, the bob white quails. I can remember those quails, you know. When they up in the trees, they whistling that bob, bob, bob white. But when they come on the ground, it's another tune. They whistle another tune. So, you know, when they come on the ground, you get to picking your strawberries, you're gonna get that shotgun. And daddy's gonna kill those quails. So you have quails. You know, you pick the quails, bring them home, and mother would saute them. And the one thing about the government back then, you, you got commodities from WPA at workers had commodities, so we got, but they never gave you margarine, they gave you good butter. So I came up with good butter, I'm a butter person. Mother put those little quails in that butter, and in our backyard we had plum trees, just a plain little red plum, and the trees mother would make jelly with them. So here we had the quail, glaze them with the jelly, have that with grits. <laughs> now that's how I served that to President Bush. <laughs> he said, me, I never had grits and quail before, but I like it. I said, well, I came up on grits and quail. <laughs> but it's just fun to see what you can do with food, how you can bring it together, how you can get different cultures to come in and work with their food and, and mix it up with yours. The chefs of today have to really concentrate on what that for one thing, do not go in that kitchen with money on your mind. <laughs> and I tell that to people looking for any job. Don't go in there money on your mind. Go in there doing what you love to do and do it well. If you do what you love to do, I don't care if it's digging ditches. If you think you can dig that ditch perfect, do it well. The money will come. When I was coming up, I was looked on as oh, nothing, nothing. I couldn't even fit in high society community because I'm just a cook. But now chefs, they get notoriety, they get fame for their work, but you have to do it well and you have to present it well. I don't care if you cook a pot of greens, put it on that plate and make it look good. And that's important. It is so important. And it's, you know, to do this, you make so many people happy. And if you can make people happy, that's a wonderful thing. That's just a great thing.